Now, in this example, what I've got is three points E, F and G with coordinates minus 2, 2, 5, 1 and minus 2, minus 6. And we've got to find the equation of the circle then that passes through these three points. Now what I showed you in an earlier tutorial is that we need to find the centre and the radius of the circle. And to get the centre we look at finding the intersection of perpendicular bisectors of any two non-parallel chords. And then we go on to find the radius as the distance between the centre and any point on the circumference. So, first of all, I would always encourage you to draw a sketch of the diagram because it is so easy to miss very simple points. Like in this example, what we've got is E and G are vertically above one another. So if we took this chord through here, let's just mark it in, let's mark it in in say brown, okay, we've got that chord down there, a vertical chord. So that means that the center must lie on a horizontal line like this, the perpendicular bisector of E and G. So we would already have the y coordinate then of the center of the circle. It must lie on here. And to get that y coordinate, we just need to find then the midpoint, the y coordinate for the midpoint of EG. And so to do that, it's just going to be the midpoint of 2 and minus 6. So we just add those two coordinates together and divide by 2. So if we do that, let's just write that in here. Okay, just change that. We've got y equals 2 added to minus 6, 2 plus minus 6, and divide by 2. So the equation of this line becomes minus 2. Alright? Now we need to take another chord. You can take either EF or GF. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm going to take EF, so we'll just mark that in, like so. And we now need to get the equation of the perpendicular bisector running through there. So we'll just mark that on. It's coming down something like that. Okay? So we need to get this point here, first of all the midpoint of EF. Get the midpoint of EF, let's just write that in, midpoint of EF is going to equal the mean of the X and Y coordinates of EF. So in other words, for the X coordinate, it'll be minus 2 add 5 divided by 2, and for the Y coordinate, it'll be 2 add 1 divided by 2. So what does that give us? Well, it gives us 3 over 2 and 3 over 2. So we've got the midpoint of EF. Now we need to get the gradient of this line. And to get the gradient of that line, we need to work out the gradient of EF and then use the perpendicular property of two gradients. That is that they multiply together to give minus 1. So we get the gradient of EF next. So we're just writing gradient EF. And to get gradient, remember, difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. So difference in the y coordinates, 2 minus 1, all divided by the difference in the x coordinates, minus 2 minus 5. So minus 2 minus 5. Work this out, what do we get? We get 1 over minus 7, so in other words, minus 1 seventh. So what does that mean that the perpendicular gradient is going to be? Well, the perpendicular gradient will be simply 7. Simple rule that the product of these two gradients must come to negative 1. So all you've got to do is just literally switch the sign and turn the gradient, this fraction, upside down. So we get plus 7. 
Now that we've got the perpendicular gradient and we've got a point on the line here, the perpendicular bisector, we know that the coordinates of this point here are 3 upon 2, 3 upon 2. We can get the equation of the line. Equation of the line, let's just put it down here, equation of the perpendicular bisector okay is okay now what's form is it going to take well the form would be y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1 where y1 x1 are the coordinates of a point on the line we know that x1 y1 will be this point here and as for the gradient m it will be 7 so we could fill this in We've got y minus y1, so y1 being 3 over 2 then. The gradient, m being 7. And we've got x1 being 3 over 2. So that's our equation then of the perpendicular bisector. Now, we've got to find this point here, the coordinates of the centre. And to do that, we know that the y coordinate is minus 2. So we could substitute minus 2 into here, solve the equation, and get the x coordinate for the center. So if I call this equation number 1, okay, what we need to do is say sub y equals minus 2 into 1, and solve the equation to get x. So if we substitute minus 2 into here, we've got minus 2 minus 3 over 2 equals 7 times the x, that's 7x, and 7 times minus 3 over 2 is minus 21 over 2. Now, if I leave it to you to solve that, what you should find, okay, is that you get x to turn out to be 1. Alright, simple equation, just rearrange it you'll get x equals 1. So what does that mean? It means that therefore we have a center of the circle at 1 and minus 2. Okay, so we've now got our center. We need to find the radius. And to get the radius, I go to the center and just draw any line from the center out to one of these three points. I'm going to choose 5, 1. Okay? But you can experiment with the other points. You should get the same value for the radius. Let's put the center coordinates in as 1, minus 2, and the radius r. Now to get the radius, we think of the distance between two points, the center here and f, and we use Pythagoras' theorem. r squared is equal to this length squared plus this length squared. So we can say that therefore r squared equals, now this length is going to be the difference in the x coordinate, so it would be 5 take away the 1. I notice I haven't put a bracket around there, so I'll just put a bracket in there. So we've got 5 minus 1, all squared, so a length of 4 across here. And then what's this length? Well, it'll be 1 minus minus 2. 1 minus minus 2, a length of 3. That length 3, and we've got to square it for Pythagoras' theorem. So what does this mean? Well, we've got that this equals 5 take away 1, 4, 4 squared is 16, plus 1 minus minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, 16 and 9, 25. So that's the radius squared. As for the equation of the circle, we're in a good position now because we know the center of the circle and we know the radius squared. So we should be able to say that therefore the equation of the circle is, and we know it's normally has the form x minus x1 all squared plus y minus y1 all squared equals the radius squared. 
where x1, y1 are the coordinates of the center, and obviously we've got the radius squared. So if we fill this in with x1 and y1, what we've got, x1 was 1, so here. We've got y1 is minus 2, so it's y minus minus 2, so that becomes plus 2. And we've got the radius squared, which is 25, so we can write in there 25. So, that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.